glitz and glamour of Las Vegas as everyone excited for the finals of the Vegas shoot 2023. And this time, what happens in Vegas goes out to the world. We've had 25 open men <laughs> pleaded with perfect 900s, but it was this shooter, Remington Boyer, who was the lucky dog in Vegas. He shot an 899 and an inside out arrow will get him into the show to compete against the 25 others that had a perfect score. But before we get to that, we have other things to attend to, like this, the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please rise as you are able and remove your cover and address the flag of the United States of America over on the far left side of the stadium. And now, the national anthem of the United States of America, please welcome 13-year-old Peyton Hudson. stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang the bombs Nicely done. Thank you, Peyton Hudson. And now, once again, please welcome a guy with a tough act to follow right now. This is Bruce Cull, once again, president of the Vegas shoot. Bruce. All right, once again, welcome everyone. The largest Vegas shoot in history. And this is the start of what is the Vegas shoot. George, take it away. Competitors, here are the rules of the Vegas shoot 2023. For the championship division, including championship young adult, ties for first, second, and third place will be determined by the highest total score from all three days of competition, not counting X rings. All competitors tied with the same high score at the end of the third day will compete in a shoot-off to determine final places. The shoot-off will include one practice end followed by end-by-end -end sudden death. The first end will be scored with regular scoring, followed by scoring where only the X ring will score a 10. After each end, only those athletes still tied with the highest score will continue in the shoot-off. All athletes' placement in the tournament, other than first, second, or third, will be determined by the order in which they drop out of the shoot-off. If more than one athlete drops out of the shoot-off at the same end, those archers will be placed based on their total score and X count of all three days, including the score and Xs accumulated in the shoot-off. All other ties for flight and championship will be broken by the highest score and the highest X count. Ties remaining after X count will equally split the combined payout of the tied positions.
Tonight, the shootoffs that we will see include a number of different divisions. We have some divisions where the champion has already been determined. We have other divisions where we have runner-ups that have been determined. We'll be seeing competition for the young adult in the championship compound category, as well as senior female, female championship compound, senior championship compound, and male championship recurve. We'll also have shoot-offs for the championship compound female category. And of course, tonight, we'll be seeing a number of past Vegas and world champions as they go for $57,000 in Vegas prize money here tonight. But up first, we have four divisions where, as I mentioned earlier, our champion has already been determined. One of those divisions is where our runner-up has also been determined. Now, let's welcome our first five athletes. The champion of the compound young adult division representing the state of Massachusetts. Please welcome Dewey Hathaway. The champion of the compound senior women's division from the state of Washington, Christina Davis. The champion of the compound senior division from the state of California, Mark Rubio. The first runner up of the recurve men's division representing France, Thomas Chetway. And the champion of the recurve men's division representing Brazil, Marcus de Almeida. Please congratulate our champions, ladies and gentlemen. Are we ready? Here come. You guys are telling me two different things. Are we bringing in a little performance right now? No. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to meet our athletes competing for second and third place in their respective divisions. Sorry, Bruce, we had a short delay there. We're on our way. In the compound young adult division, representing the state of Texas, please welcome Wyatt. Dorcas. And shooting for the compound young adult category from the state of Washington, please welcome Beretta McKee. And from the state of Minnesota, Please welcome Zoe Thompson. And now competitors. And now in the compound senior women's division representing Canada, please welcome Don Grashko.
And from the state of Michigan, please welcome Juliet Sherrick. Dawn and Juliet are shooting for second and third place in the compound senior women's category. Next up, competitors for second and third place in the compound senior division from the state of Oregon, welcome Bill Drake. And from the state of Ohio, Randy Morocco. Bill and Randy will be shooting for second and third place for the compound senior division. And now the second and third place competitors for the compound women's category. Representing Great Britain, this is Ella Gibson. And representing Italy, please welcome Elisa Rohner. Ella and, Are and Elisa will be shooting for third place. And now in the recurve men's division, representing France, please welcome Jules Beltran. And shooting against Jules for third place for the recurve men, representing Germany, please welcome Felix Weisser. Sudden death shoot-off will take place to determine the ranking as we are about to get underway under the official timing. Competitors, you can hang your targets on your specific lane. Competitors, I remind you, you will have one practice end before we start scoring. Welcome everyone into the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White sitting alongside a couple time Vegas champ, Mike Schlusser. Mike, good to have you here. And in a way, sorry you're here, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be here. All right, well, Mike, here we are. We're set for a couple of different matches. And tell us a little bit about the field to play. What's the distance we're shooting? What's the target we're shooting at? Uh, it's a Vegas try, try spot. It's um, at 20 yards or 80 meters. And we are getting ready for a couple ends of competition. Now, Mike, this is, uh, is kind of unique to the Vegas shoot where What's happened over the course of the last three days to get us to where we are? Uh, so I have three days of shooting, 30 hours a day, and now like the, the final hours are going to be shot to see who gets second and third place. Yeah, and so basically what happens is in each of these classes, there is a champion that was decided by score, and then there are some ties. If there's a tie for second or third place, then these shootoffs happen. Now, anything beyond that? fourth, fifth, and how many people are in the class. They look at the score, and then they look at how many X's were shot, and then that's how they determine their position. So we have a variety of ways to uh, determine this shoot-off, but still coming up on the docket, we're going to have a shoot-off for first place in the hotly contested championship compound female category as we make our way towards the shoot-off for the open class, which, of course, has 26 competitors that are all shooting for $57,000. Now, Mike, have you been in this situation before? You won the Vegas shoot 
back in 2014 and 2017. Have you been in this situation though where you were shooting off for second, third place, that type of thing? Uh, yeah, the second time I won it in 2017, um, I won it and then still the second and third place wasn't decided yet. So they needed to shoot it after I won. That's kind of like a little bit of a bummer because you want to celebrate it. But you still need to be, of course, respectful to the other ones and then yeah, right. that, and that happens occasionally. I think back to 2016 when Sergio Pagni from Italy was our lucky dog and he won it, what? You remember? In one end, right? One end, yeah. Three, three X's he shot it, and then uh, he was, that was decided. <laughs> and then he had to wait until everybody shot off, and then the celebrations began. So we're going to get our first shooting underway. What's interesting about this Vegas tournament, I think, is that across compound and recurve disciplines that we all shoot the same targets unlike what you find in world archery, where the 10 ring here on the Vegas target doesn't exist on a compound target in world archery, does it? Yeah, we only have the inner 10, and the X in Europe we call it the inner 10. Um, it's a bit smaller, it's only the, the half the size that a normal 10 is. All right, so here archers are out. What, what's important about this particular end of archery right now for all these competitors? Uh, just get your nerves to where they want to be. Some people want to like bring their nerves up. Some people want to bring them down. Uh, side in, of course, like the lighting is different in the practice range. Um, just get in your zone. The other thing the archers will do, you can occasionally see they're going to bring those binoculars and check out where the arrow is impacting, and that's going to be critical. Now, Mike, when we look at how a recurve bow aims, like what you have to assist your aiming versus a compound, dramatically different, right? Yeah, uh, the recurve only has uh, a side pin. Uh, as this compound, we have a beep that you can look through. You can have a clarifier in it sometimes. You have, of course, a lens that magnifies it, the bubble, Could the old you bows, uh, and straight. Side, is that not possible? Oh. So it looks like we have our first end of practice done, so now scoring ends. Is it, when you're in a situation like this, do you feel it's important for you to put them all in the middle, knowing that your competitor's gonna glance at your target on the way down here after the first end of practice? Uh, sometimes, you, I don't think that most people think about it. It's mm. just you, yourself, and the target. So uh, the only thing that you can control is yourself, so you only focus on yourself. So we're in a situation where obviously this is high pressure. Normally this happens on the shooting line, on the third day of competition and qualifications, you know, as each class can have a separator in terms of the points. How do you look at your equipment and possibly, I don't even know how you do this, set it up to work under the pressure of these shoot-off situations? Um, you try to of course, try to get it uh, forgiving because in the nerves you make more mistakes, uh, never the, the faults come out. Bruce and from there on, you just uh, make sure that it happens. Good. There's Elisa Rohner from Italy who stormed on the scene Friday after shooting a perfect 300 score eligible for the 10K a day shoot off and took down 83 different competitors and was able to shoot an inside out arrow after eight to shoot $10,000. She, on the right, in the Team PSC shirt, going up, off, up against the world number one in Ella Gibson in the Hoyt shirt. And of course, they're featured in the middle. That'll be for third place. And the reason that's for third place is because we have Tanya Galantine versus Paige Pierce coming up to decide who's going to be number one. We have a packed house in the Prefert Arena here at the South Point Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this is the showcase. We had 3,909 entries into this year's tournament. The majority of those are amateurs, and so they love watching these championship competitors. The most, most of these championship competitors, at least in the adult category, are basically pro or former pro status. All right, first end of scoring for the variety of classes that we have here. They're all championship, we have compound young adult, compound female senior, compound female, compound senior, and recurve male. Good shot of the draw cycle of Ella Gibson.
nice rematch of yesterday Ella against Elisa. It certainly is. What was going on yesterday? We had the World Cup final yesterday. It's uh, four stages of World Cups indoor. After that, the top 16 gets invited to shoot the uh, yeah, World Cup finals. Uh, from there on, uh, they won. Yeah, they went for the World final. Yesterday. And Elisa Rona really storming on the scene here in Vegas with a big W last night. Good look at the targets. Ella Gibson definitely dialed in. Still 35 seconds left on the shot clock. And a long hold from Felix Weiser from Germany. Looks like a potential draw on turn 11 and a potential draw on turn 7. All right, so you can see that down at the bottom of the target bales, they're numbered. So that'll give you a clue when we talk about target two or three. So we'll have judges go down and score arrows. And we can see that it looks like the senior female division might have been decided. First arrow call for Wyatt Orcas out of Texas is a 30. McKee, 30. And Beretta McKee also in with a 30. Now to Zoe Thompson from Minnesota. I think that's going to be probably a 28. Thompson, 29. 29. All right, so for Thompson, that'll do it for her journey. The Vegas Sorry, shoot 2023. It should be credited with fourth place in the compound young adult category. And for Zoe Thompson, that will net her $1,000. And now as we move on to the Canadian versus the American in Championship sure. compound female. And it looks like Juliet Sherrick will take second place that finish. second place Juliet finish. Sherrick. And Dawn, congratulations, second place. And third place, second place, Juliet. Congratulations, ladies. Dawn Cross come one of Canada's most experienced. Second place in the championship place. compound Juliet. female winning five thousand dollars and thirty five hundred. As we continue moving down the line, Ella Gibson, it's noted, is a 30. Max value. Judges are taking a look at, so at Rohner. So they're still tied. So we're going to go to another arrow, another group of arrows. Now it's time for the championship compound senior category. Where we saw Mark Rubio was our champion from California. Now it's Bill Drake. And Randy Morocco. Morocco, 30. They go all even with 30 apiece. That went over for third in the recurve male category. Weiser, 29. 29 for Weiser. Waltron, 28. And 28. So it looks like Felix Weiser will capture third place in the championship recurve men. $2,000 to the German and $1,000 to the Frenchman. So now arrows will be pulled and targets pulled down. Now Mike Schlusser, as these archers prepare for another round, and some of them are going home, let's talk about the Vegas shoot. Uh, you know, you're from Europe, obviously, and, and ingrained in archery. You've been shooting a long time. I mean, when you won this thing was, I mean, we're talking nine years ago already, That's, which is incredible, actually, to think about it, being such a young guy that you are. How is the Vegas shoot viewed around the world? I mean, we saw over 40 countries here, and obviously we're getting close to 4,000 entries for the Vegas shoot. How is it viewed over there? Uh, for us, it's like the, the pinnacle of, of archery. It's the, the event of the year. It's our um, event that we look forward to the most and also prepare for the most probably because it's the highest paid event that we have. 
Do you also find that it's a good opportunity for you to connect with some of those athletes, archers that you don't normally get to see, maybe some 3D archers because you're traveling around the world, that type of thing? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, I was shooting yesterday with some people that only shoot ASAs, for example, and they we normally never see because I'm not a 3D archer. And it's really nice to meet them, but also like the sponsors, like everybody uh, comes here with a stand, but the manufacturers come here, and then it's a nice way to connect because you normally don't see them all year long. And do you get hounded by fans as well? I mean, obviously you have the nickname okay. Mr. Perfect for a reason. And do you, do you get fans asking you questions all the time, want to take photos and, and stuff? Oh yeah, for sure. Like uh, I get walk around and then people come over with their signatures and pictures. I took a picture with somebody and I took pictures nine years ago when I won it. Uh, and he was 12 at the time and he's not 21. So <laughs> like a big, uh, yeah, big thing. That's awesome. Good luck. All right, so. We still have young adult to shoot off for second and third place. We have compound female shooting off for third place, including our world number one, Ella Gibson from the UK. And then we have our second place and third place to be decided in the compound senior category. And I can tell you that Mike Schlusser has got the binos to his eyes and he's gonna be taking a look at those targets. What are you seeing as they're hitting the target, Mike? I uh, see the tens for the ladies, uh, the young adults look at two tens as well. And with the senior man, it looks like it's 10 against nine. Okay, so it looks like possibly Randy Morocco, who you're looking at on the left part of your screen. The Matthews shirt on, Matthews bow in hand. Didn't look like he liked that shot too much. But it was a 10 though. It was a 10. Drake's target is looking good so far. What a coming out party for Elisa Rona from Italy. Absolutely has put on a show here in Vegas. And trying to cap it off with a podium finish. A win will guarantee her third. Why Dorcas just got done with his final air arrow. Now the binos come out. I think Ella might have a 29 against a 30 from Elisa. Okay, after that second end where we have the X ring scoring as the 10, I think we're going to see some movement here. In a couple X of ring matches. scoring is the 10 in our second arrow. So goals. if you don't contact that X ring, it's going to be counted as a nine. There's some close liners at the young adult. Mm -hmm. That's Beretta McKee out of Washington. And yeah, sometimes you're only standing a few yards away from the target and you're still glassing it. All right, so we know that for young Wyatt, it's a 28. Now one of these is really close and the judge is taking a close look. 29 will take second place for McKee. Here comes the call. As we await the call. McKee, 29. And second place will go to Beretta McKee. And Wyatt Dorcas will take third place in the compound young adult category. So for McKee, $2,000 prize from the NFA and $1,500 for third place. Congratulations to Beretta. Gibson, 29. 29 for Ella Gibson. Oh, and it looks like Rohner, 30. Elisa Rohner in another upset. Yeah, not upset indeed. Two nights in a row. Rohner, third place in As quickly, these two are becoming hot rivals. We'll have to see what happens in the World Archery Outdoor season with Elisa Rohner. So, so congratulations for Elisa Rohner as well to her. Dallas now to Bill Drake and Randy Morocco. Drake, 30. 30 for Drake. And we just saw a fist bump from those two. And Morocco, 29. 29 for Morocco. Second place. So Bill right Drake, here. second place, place finish. $5,000 for second, $3,500 for third place. Everybody's done. Under lights in front of the yes, crowd. 
And so for all but two classes in our championship division, the podiums have been decided. As the stage is being set for a powerhouse match between two of the biggest in our sport on the championship compound female division, two who shot perfect 900s here in Vegas. And oh, by the way, if you're in a championship division, Mike Schlusser, and you shoot a 900, you're guaranteed at least $2,500 in your pocket. Correct. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. On top of the possibility of all the other prize money that's available. For championship compound female, the top prize is $10,000, with second place $5,000. Great shooting by those two archers. So now the field of play clears. As we have more t-shirts being thrown into the Coming stands. Next, the championship compound women's division showdown. What a night so far. 2022 Vegas runner up. And now it looks like we're getting ready. In 2020, Vegas champion from California, Paige Pierce. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the contenders. Heading into the final end of qualification in the championship compound women's category, it was Paige Pierce with a sigh of relief as she looks at her target and finds out perfectly clean. 900 points. And then it was up to Tanya Galantin. She had her last arrow lined up, and she hit it and turns around, and her sigh of relief, and congratulations from Paige Pierce, and congratulations from her husband, Braden. But there were some heavy hitters that didn't make it into this final two. So perfect 900s for these two archers, and now it's time to shoot them off to find out who will be Vegas champion. The contenders for the championship compound women's division from the state of California, this is Paige. And her opponent for the champion representing Denmark, Tanya Galatine. Bruce, once again, a sudden death shoot-off will determine the ranking as these two great world-class competitors get ready to duke it out here in the arena. Greg White, Mike Schlusser, bringing you the action from the booth. And Mike, what can be said about these two archers? Incredible. Their resumes are long and distinguished, <laughs> and they have been in this situation many times. Yeah, they're like two very capable women shooting their bow. Um, it's going to be a really exciting match to see. And keep in mind, there were 25 in the open category that shot perfect 900s, and these two. So we had 27 total here in Vegas, and we just continue to see the amount of women that are impressive that are throwing up 300s. Now, it, it's, a, it's a big task to shoot a 900, do 300 three days in a row, but we saw a tremendous amount just shoot a 300 in each of the days, and the level is going so high. All right, tell us a little bit about what the shootout's going to be like. What what is our scoring looking like as the targets are hung 20 yards down range from where the archers stand? Yeah, so the first round of scoring will be on the, the bigger 10, the Vegas 10. Uh, from the second round on, it will only be shot at the, at the inner 10 as a 10. So down on, it's going to be more difficult for those green 30s. Great stories practice. with these two archers is Paige Pierce stays this with her longtime shoot. sponsor, Bowtech, but with a brand new bow, a bow that was launched just a few months ago. As for Tanya Gallantine, okay. she lines up with a dart bow in a big this switch during the off season, and we both of these archers have adapted to their new equipment in a hurry. It's only these two archers who are familiar with themselves as Paige. Always with a good laugh, right, lightening up the mood. So first, we're gonna get a practice end. 
What are we doing for the practice and why? Uh, just signing in, getting used to the, the arena, getting a feel for the audience. And looking at Paige Pierce now. She has a rather unique way of shooting. Now her style, the way she pulls the bow back and holds it and everything, looks pretty standard. But when you look at her setup and the way she looks through the, the peep and it, she uses an eight power lens in her scope. Yeah. What is, what's that gonna do for you? Uh, for some people wanna, yeah, of course, see clearly. Um, she has probably a bit of a shorter draw length than uh, some guys. So for her, an eight power lens is probably the same as a seven or six for somebody that has a longer draw length. And that's really determined by where the peep, which is in her yeah. string, the little circle in her string, uh, gets close to her eye, like the distance between the peep and the actual yeah, sight itself. Yeah, this is more like between your eye and the, and the sight itself. Hmm. Interesting. Here's a good look at the setup of Tanya Galantine. You see Paige Pierce choosing to use a fiber, a lit fiber pin in her sight. She's becoming a 3D shooter with the light. She certainly is. You know what's interesting is that uh, how often do you sit at home, shoot practice rounds, even practice rounds when you're getting ready to shoot in the arena and have people applaud for it? Never. Like, it's once a year. Twice, <laughs> maybe. Like, you have Neem that's always, like, really crowded and really fun to shoot. And, um, and this one as well. Like, once yeah, again. Like, the arena is full. Just how do you tune out just knowing that all these people are around watching you? How do you mentally prepare for something like this, or how do you do it when you're standing there like these two? Uh, just focus on yourself and, and your target. It's right, the only thing you can do, and just make good shots, and let the rest will fade away. All right, so it looks like we're going to go back and forth, I believe, which means that they'll be right. one to shoot first. first. When we get down to a small number of archers, and you'll see in the next round with all the boys Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. When we get down to a smaller amount of archers, and this will happen in our Vegas shoot, the open category, a little bit later on, we're going to alternate shooters. So Paige Pierce had the higher X count, so she's going to choose whether she shoots first or second, and Paige has chosen to shoot first. Regular scoring. When you're in this situation, Mike Schlusser, what do you like to do? Would you rather send the first arrow first and put the pressure on the opponent? Uh, I think so. Like I think the majority of people like to start shooting so that they can put the pressure on the opponent. Some people also like to know what they need to shoot to Ten. beat or to tie the score. Ten. was a good looking shot by Tanya. Ten. Ten. So for this first round, it's okay that Tanya caught the 10 ring. As long as she's contacting it. If this goes to a second end, that's when we're going to go to the inner, yeah. the inner circle. One thing you know about Paige, when she knows on the release that it's going in the middle, she'll let you know. Yeah. 10. Tied score under normal, normal Vegas score. All right, so the archers will walk down, and there is a yellow line that they'll stop, allowing, uh, well, maybe not. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, this is what, see, this is the thing that, that's kind of funny. This is what we've been doing for the entire weekend, right? You know, normally, you just tell us about how when you're shooting around is 30s, 30s, crawl, call the cross. You just go, straight, like, get your arrows, Here's score them. Uh, but officially, the, when there's like a shootout like this, you need to wait until like, the judges can uh, judge the arrow value. So like you need to wait behind the line so they can do the job. Yeah, it is always a little different. Yeah. Even when we had the indoor archery world championships last night, you know, you just stand there and then you shoot, and they have actually people that pull your arrows or bring them to you. That's kind of nice. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> nice. It's like you're just standing there the waiting for your arrows to come back. On to inner ten scoring. 
All right, so as we move to inner 10 scoring, the judges have requested that the archers change their target base. Now, Mike, with these targets specifically, I found shooting on these that sometimes you can find a hole that's been kind of worn out that, that goes in your favor, don't you? Yeah. you found that? Yeah, for sure. Like, if you have a good round, like, your arrows will pull into that hole and it makes it easier to keep making good shots. So if you want to have, like, a really good hole, you try to keep it like that. So you would prefer, in this situation, to be the one hanging your own target because you want to place it the spot the you want? Spot, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, just joining us, we're at the Vegas Shoot 2023. We're shooting off for a win in the championship compound women's category. Two heavyweights getting after it. They're shooting 20 yards from where they're standing to the target face, a 40 centimeter target face. And the X ring, which is the smallest ring in the middle, is the 10. Anything outside of that is gonna be counted as a nine. If it's in the red ring, it's eight, seven, six. At this level, we don't even talk about red rings, do we? Definitely not, no. Could we be three arrows away from determining the champion? Page to 10. Solid 10 for Page. Time nine. Looks like the answers. Here. Mike, as we look at these targets, it looks like Paige and Tanya actually Tanya. choose to shoot these targets in a different order. Paige starts lower left, then goes middle. Tanya starts middle, and then she's going to go down. Is there a preference? Is, is there a reason for any of that? Um, I think she has personal preference. Tanya. I like to shoot left bottom, Tanya. top, Tanya. right bottom, just because the numbers, like I, first time I came here to Vegas, I saw the numbers, so I assumed we need to shoot it like that, so yeah. I learned it like that. But I think like these ladies shoot it often, so they get their like own rit uh, ritual. Yeah, they are numbered. You can see them in the, in the bottom left-hand corner, so. Okay, this could be it. Yeah. And it looks like Tanya Galantine mm -hmm. was able to shoot that 10. And just like that, the Dart and Archer will take victory what a weekend. Both women shooting perfect 900s. And I believe that's the first arrow that Paige shot in competition all weekend. That's not a 10. Paige, she knew it. And the grimace, ah. She's been here before and she'll be here again. Con confirmed that Paige Pierce with the 29 will take second place in the compound female category. And she'll earn herself $5,000 from the NFAA. But it's Tanya Galantine who walks away with the big victory. After making the switch to Darton this year and things have really been going Tanya Galantine's way, putting a ton of hard work in the offseason since she put this new bow in her hand and she walks away with the top prize and Vegas shoot champion for the U.S. Just resident. We'll was married to Braden Galantine. What do you think about that, Mike Schluser? That was exciting to see. I could hear Braden yelling Nicole like, yes, what you want. <laughs> 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 it's, it's good that they're friends. I mean, these two are so incredible as shooters that they often find themselves shooting off against each other standing shoulder to shoulder on the line when scores get peered, paired up. It's uh, pretty incredible. The majority of us professional archers see other archers more often than our own family. So <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, very true. There's your one, two. In the quickly growing championship so women's Tanya compound Galantine, as Tanya Galantine gets the stand all by herself. Now we might have an opportunity to get a word with Tanya. We'll be hearing from our champion in just a moment. All right, Tanya, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Well, congratulations. <laughs> that was 
an awesome shoot. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I don't think I have any words for how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> it's hard to explain. So tell us a little bit about that last arrow. I'm sure you heard it over the PA and you knew what you had to do to uh, to win it. Yeah, I, you know, I could, I could also see that she had probably missed and I was very nervous, but I was just, you know, trying to stay focused and shooting like I had done all day and just, yeah, that's all I could do. We know you put a lot of hard work into the transition into your new dart and bow. Tell me how's everything worked out after such an incredible Vegas where you shot perfect and then able to take the win? Um, yeah, I, it feels amazing. I obviously put a lot of work into the bow and spent a lot of hours on the range and it's just really, really awesome to see it all, you know, come well, to a Vegas win. Well, you did it. Congratulations, <laughs> Tandy Galantine. Great Thank shooting you. and Vegas 2023 champion. Well, as the crowd enjoys the spoils of Tanya Galantine, it was these two at the top of their game who squared off after a first round of 30s apiece. It came down to just one single point. Paige Pierce's only nine in competition of the weekend, and it was enough for Tanya Galantine to jump on it and take victory. What a match we saw for the Vegas shoot in the championship compound female division. Paige will be thinking about that shot for some time to come. And Galantine will be enjoying that moment as she takes home the top spot. Hey everybody, welcome. We're here at the biggest Vegas shoot ever. There's nearly 4,000 of us here. Together, having fun. All kinds of people from all over the world. I'm just a small town kid with simple tastes. But on this field, I'm the man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the main event. This year, one the shooting circle accounts. From the state of Indiana, Dane Johnson. From France, Jean-Philippe Bourges. From Italy, Federico Pagnoni.
from Austria, reigning champion of the world, Nico Vina. From Slovenia, Tim Jesnik. From the state of New Jersey, Tim Hanley. From Wisconsin, past champion of the world, James Lutz. From Denmark, Matthias Fullerton. From Utah, Drew Hortman. From Missouri, Christian Clark. From Wisconsin, Zach Blonsky. From Utah, 2021 Vegas champion, Kyle Douglas. From Florida, Lonnie Jacob Marlowe. From Washington, 2022 Vegas champion, Bodie Turner. From Denmark, two-time champion of the world, Stefan Hansen. From Kentucky, former champion of the world, Braden Galantine. From Montana, Chris Schaff. From Arkansas, Richard Bowen. From Canada, world champion, 2018 Vegas champion, Chris Perkins. From Alabama, Robert Householder. From Kansas, Jeff Rainey. <laughs> Representing El Salvador, Roberto Hernandez. <laughs> Representing France, Kentin Barrer. Representing Indiana, Angus Moss. And now, the one you've been waiting for, here he comes, the lucky dog from Missouri, Remington Boyer.
Our 26 contenders are here. Bruce Cull on the field of play. All right, everybody, set your bows down. Or do you want their bows, Dean? No bows. We want all you to come right up here, turn around on the shooting line. You want to head on first time? All right, hold on. Dean's changing. He's speaking in some other language to me. Everybody face Dean. Dean, tell him what you want him to do. Oh, look at this. Here comes the crossed arm thing. Okay. There you go. Face Look. the crowd, there you go. Give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> Dean, are we good? Awesome. All right, gentlemen, we're gonna get started. We're gonna have you all go down and put your targets up, the officials will help you, and we'll get going. $57,000 at stake tonight, not to mention contingency. This could easily be an over $100,000 night for these competitors, and it is Bruce Call and the NFAA Foundation and the Vegas Shoot and all of you who have made it possible to have this be the biggest archery tournament in the world, bar none. It's happening because of you. Give yourselves a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, this is the main event. Before we get started, how many of you on this line is it your first time up here? Raise your hands up. Oh yeah, look at the enthusiasm there, man. We got some happiness going on, all right. Cool, welcome to this. Obviously the rest of you have all been here. Who's won the Vegas shoot? Raise your hand. Who's got podiumed in the Vegas shoot? Raise your hands, keep them up. Look at the experience here, guys. This is uh, as good as it gets right here. Okay, you all know the rules. This is gonna be your first and only official practice end, and then we're gonna go right into the shooting. Everybody ready? Archers to the line. Welcome everyone to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White, sitting alongside two-time Vegas champ, Mike Schlusser. As we look at this talented field of archers, 25 plus a lucky dog, so 26 lining up to all shoot for $57,000 plus whatever contingency they, they might have. Mike Schlusser, welcome to the booth. We know you wanted to be out there. You had a good, good round of shooting. Unfortunately, one point, lucky dog. You were one of the final seven, but it was Remington Boyer who put it inside out there. How are you feeling right now about this talented field that we have? Very exciting. It's going to be a great match, and uh, I'm going to see some, we're going to see some good archery. So basically, the way these archers were ranked, each one of these archers over the last three days shot 90 arrows. The maximum point value is 10, so a perfect 900 got them in, with the exception of Boyer, who shot 899, went up against 84 or 44 other shooters, 43 other shooters, and was able to get Lucky Dog. And they were ranked in how many X's that they shot. We're talking about Bodie Turner. This is his birthday. He just turned 16 today. 
after coming off of World Archery last night, where he won his last at 15, and he's the reigning Vegas champion. Mike Schuster, you've been around this sport a while. You've been in this position before. How incredible is it that someone this young can can perform at such a high level? It's great to see. Uh, it's the young people that are coming up, and uh, he has an awesome season so far, winning Lancaster last weekend. So uh, I'm pretty sure he feels confident in himself. Looking at the bottom of your screen, you can see in that Hoyt jersey there, there's Jonathan Scott. He was the last of our archers. He shot 68 X's in his perfect 900. And his last end, I had a look at that, man, and it was nerve-wracking. What's, what's more nerve-wracking, the first arrow of 90 or the last arrow of 90? Oh, by far the last arrow, because uh, you come so far and then you don't want to mess it up. Certainly. All right, so we have 26 archers that'll start shooting. There's a good look at Kyle Douglas, our 2021 and 2020 Vegas champion, who made a big switch in the offseason to his new bow manufacturer, Bowtech. I've had long talks with Kyle about how he sets up the bow. And you'll see on his riser, which of okay, course is where he holds the bow, you'll see that I'm he's got a lot of extra weight on there, and that's all about the setup. Let's get to Bruce. But I really want to take this opportunity again to thank all of you for the history we set here in Vegas. A really big thank you to all those people on the board right there. All the banners you see in here are sponsors. They pay contingency money to these shooters. Look at all the shirts you see represented here by the bow companies. The manufacturers, the vendors, the sponsors we have, and all of you make this exactly what it's become. The biggest and the best shoot there is in the world. Big round of applause for all of you. Deep breath, gentlemen. This is it. This is your first official scoring end. This end will be scored just like you shot the last three days. Regular scoring. 26 contenders for this championship compound open division. This is Vegas 2023. We better look at Remington Boyer. Archers to the line. The, the way that they actually line these archers up, if you go towards the center, you see Jacob Marlow in the elite jersey in the right part of your screen. Stefan Hansen is in there. Those are the archers that have the highest X count after three days of competition. And then we fanned out towards the edges. Now, Mike Schlusser, what's very interesting is, is that most times here in the Vegas shoot, it is not the highest X count archer that normally wins this tournament, is it? No, they're normally the someone in the middle field gets there. Or the lucky dog. <laughs> or the lucky dog. Right. Yeah. We have seen the lucky dog win this two times. Of course, the first one was 2016 with Sergio Pagny, who was here. Didn't make it to this this far on the stage, but he won it. 50th anniversary and the first $50,000 prize on one single end. And then it was Christopher Perkins in 2018. So in the field, we have Bodie Turner, Kyle Douglas, and Christopher Perkins. Those are the shooters that have won it in the past. So if those three don't win it, we're going to have a new winner. Plenty of podium finishers, though. And if you looked at when Bruce asked, holding their hands up for podiums, it was concentrated towards that center area because those were the archers with the highest X counts. And we have somewhere around five or six of these archers. It's our first time being here in the high pressure Vegas shoot final. So you'll see the archers will stop at that yellow line. You also continue to see these archers with their binoculars trying to catch a glimpse of their targets. And this is why, why? I mean, they've already shot these arrows. What's the big deal? You want to know what you shot, of course. Like, uh, you get close, but not close enough to see it exactly. So, like, you grab your binos to see uh, close by how it is. First bit of scoring, of course, like Bruce said, is just normal scoring, which is you have the smallest ring in the middle, and then the one ring after that. That's a four centimeter ring. That is the 10 at the moment. This is where we normally only see one or two people, maybe three or four drop out. Scott, 30. Okay, so Johnson, 30. we know that Scott and Johnson set the stage with 30. Jimmy Bush, 29. Oh, and for the Frenchman, Bolch, a 29. 
That's our first one. Federico Fagnoni from Italy, 30. Nico Viner. The CEO, Tim Hanley, with a 30 as well. Lutz, 30. Jimmy Lutz still in the mix with a 30. Fullerton, 30. All right, as we roll down, we've only lost one so far as we get towards Fullerton, the halfway point. 30. Drew Hortman out of Utah with a cheering section. Clark, 30. Christian Clark still in it. <laughs> now on to Zach Splonsky. To Kyle Douglas we go. Douglas, 30. No problem for Kyle Douglas. 87 X's to get here. Only three X's missed for Jacob Marlowe. Yeah, it's a close one, though. This would be a heartbreaker. Marlowe, 30. <laughs> Bruce Call just gave the Floridian a heart attack. Turner, He's clean, 30. though. Bodie Turner also with a 30. Hansen, 30. Stefan Hansen with a 30. Now to Braden Gallantine. Gallantine, 30. No problem for him. We still only have one drop. Shop in. Now to Richard Bowen. Bowen, 30. No problem for him. The Canadian Christopher Perkins. Perkins, 30. So the 2018 champ still in it. Householder. Householder, 30. No problem for him. To Rainey, Jeff Rainey. Rainey, 30. Roberto Hernandez from El Salvador. Hernandez, 30. We're down to our last three. We've only had one dropped. Rare, 30. To Angus Moss. Moss, 30. And to our lucky dog. Is our lucky and dog still in? 30. He is. So after the first round, Mike Schlusser, we've only dropped one archer. So 26 is now down to 25. And they're changing target bases wide. Yeah. Uh, just you can see the lines clearly where you're going to put them in. Uh, because we're going to go to the, the smaller X, the line is normally always sharp a bit. So just to be clear, because it's like a high money tournament, of course, we're going to be like as clear as possible. All right, so Jean-Philippe. Bolsh out of this one. There were actually some people predicting him to win it, but unfortunately, a little bobble. And there's your last year's champ. Freshly minted 16 year old. I wonder if he can get his driver's license now in the state of Washington. Why? I mean, they've already tried. It's hard to say, you know. Here's Dane Johnson. Giving us the peace sign. Dane Johnson, of course, hearing impaired and talks about it as an inspiration to anyone hearing impaired who's thinking about participating in sports. Dane Johnson, an advocate for hearing impaired athletes to come on out and compete. And he found his niche in archery. Mike Schlusser, I do have a question thinking about Bodie Turner. What were you doing on your 16th birthday? Were you shooting for $57,000? Um, I don't think so. I think I was shooting uh, back then in Nîmes. It was it my birthday is normally in the Nîmes weekend? So oh, is that right? Pretty sure I was shooting as well, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, that's this pretty incredible. Archery has been your life for a long time. When did you start shooting? I was about five when I started, and I started competing when I was six. Wow. Uh -huh. Wow. So it's been 39, four, no, 47 years for you? Something like that. <laughs> no, you're not that. You're not that old. All right, now we're going to the smallest ring in the middle is what counts as a 10. Anything outside of that is a nine. Highest score after three arrows on the range will advance the archers. Anything below that, you're going home. 
And this is normally where we see some pretty big cuts. Eight different countries represented here in the Vegas Shoot 2023 in this compound open division. We started with 26, we're down to 25 after one end. Our lucky dog, Remington Boyer, still in the mix. Obviously, the United States is represented. France, Italy, Austria, Slovenia, Denmark, Canada, and El Salvador. Well, first 30 is back with Stefan Hansen's. Right, so Stephen Hansen, who also made a big change in his bow manufacturer this year in the offseason. Now shooting for Matthews. He's put a lot of work behind the bubble to get used to the way the Matthew shoots compared to his older, the brand he was shooting for the last several years. And I'm sitting next to Mike Schlusser, and he's got the binos up to his eyes. Anything that stands okay. out? Uh, nothing much, just some 30s, 29s. So I think we're going to lose quite a lot of people so far. Okay. So as... As we get to the scoring, we'll hand it over to Bruce Cole, and he'll give us the answers we're looking for. Scott, 28. Johnson, 30. Bagnoni, 30. Weiner, 30. Jevznik, 30. Hanley, 30. Lutz. 29. Fullerton, 30. Hartman, 30. Clark, 30. Plonsky, 30. Douglas, 30. Marlowe, 29. Turner, 30. Hanson, 30. Gillantine, 29. Schaff, 30. Some big surprises, Mike Schlusser. I think two of them, Jacob Marlowe and Braden Galantine out after the second arrow. Pretty incredible. Yeah, that's a high axle count, so we would expect it to go further. Bowen, 29. Oh, uh, that's another big surprise. Richard Bowen out in the second round. Normally, we see him go deep into this Perkins, field. 30. Householder, 
30. Rainey, 29. Out. That's six so far for the second arrow. Hernandez, 28. A good run for Hernandez. Stops here. Barr, 28. Quentin from France. We'll have to take a seat. Moss, 29. Angus Moss gone. Boyer, 30. And Remington Give Boyer a big still round in the mix. Of applause to all those 29s and 28s. Thank we lost you nine for in shooting that round. so well, and hopefully we'll see you another time here. Most of you can pull all your targets down. So Mike Schluser started with 26. Now we're down to 16. That's all there is to start this match. Do you find it easier, even though you know what you're up, you're shooting for, when you're in a group of archers like this, because you can feel that all eyes aren't on you specifically? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like the first couple of rounds, it's not because there are more people there. Like you get just in your own group. Uh, later on, like especially in the, like the last three, they go to alternate shooting. So then it's really, it's really all eyes on you, and then all the shows on you, kind of. Well, some surprise exits early. Jimmy Lutz is definitely one of them. Jacob Marlowe, Brighton Gellin team, and Richard Bowen in that mix. And again, all these archers are so incredibly capable of shooting these X's, but when you come to the center stage, under the lights with this crowd behind you, the field completely changes. So our lucky dog, Remington Boyer, still in the mix, as is Dane Johnson. Federico Pagnoni from Italy. Nico Wiener. Tim Jeschnik from Slovenia. CEO Tim Hanley. Fullerton from Denmark. Portland from Utah. Christian Clark we saw there in the replay. Pumped to get to this portion of the night. Blonsky, Douglas, Turner, Hansen, Schaff. Perkins Householder, and that's the field. Grayson Clark made yesterday the vocal final, and he was like, this is the best day of my life so far, but I'm pretty sure this one is, the day is now is the new best day in his life. There's our reigning champ. Remington Boyer. Now once the numbers dwindle, this call will move these archers closer to the center. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Mike Schlusser on the binoculars. Anything stand out just yet, Mike? Uh, only the Italian shot a nine so far. I can see. Wiener has a close one. I'm sure Bodie Turner liked the shot that he just released. He's, he's glassing his third arrow. It's, it's a good next though. Okay. We got some 30s on. And some close ones as well though. Plenty of time to shoot arrows. There's still 50 seconds remaining on the clock. And that should do it. Back to the target we go. And from Mike's eagle eye, it appears that we're going to have a few more that are going to start dropping out. So Bruce called down there with his microphone, and we'll start getting the calls to Bruce. Johnson, 29. Oh, uh, Dane Johnson sets the bar. Pagnoni. 
Winner, 29. Jevznik, 30. So that's the benchmark score. So up until we had that 30, 29 was the benchmark, but the Slovenian sets the mark and will remain in with the highest score of 30. Under the CEO, Tim Hanley. Hanley, 28. So Tim Hanley having a good run, and it is all done for his Vegas shoot. Fullerton, 30. Hortman, 30. Clark, 29. Plonsky, 29. Douglas, 30. Turner, 30. Hansen, 30. Hansen, 30. Sorry. Shaw, 30. Can't give you 60 points now. Sorry. <laughs> Our Neems winner from World Archery Indoor for Shaw. Still in it. Oh, it looks like Christopher Perkins. Perkins, 29. So Perkins is out. So the 2018 champ will not repeat. Householder, 29. Give them all a big round of applause that have been eliminated. Whoa! Sorry, 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 I'm free. Bruce has got to go all the way down Where, there. How'd you get over here on the end? Who let the dog out, Bruce? Yeah. And now Remington Boyer score. And Boyer 29. Oh, so the Give lucky dog is out. Applause. Everybody take your targets down. You can pull your arrows. Those of you that are left. How many don't did we lose on that one? I think eight. Just meet me right here in the center. Now no, it looks like Householder was out. I missed that call, so that's. The nine gone on that one. Now there's a look at this appointment. Bodie Turner heading to the target with confidence. So 19 are gone. We're getting down to it, Mike Schlusser. As congratulations all around because all these archers know exactly what it takes to get to this point. I mean, shooting 900 is incredible. And now you come to the center stage here at the Preferred Arena at the South Point Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, shooting for $57,000 with all eyes on you. And it becomes a different ball game. A lot of disappointed faces walk away. But now we'll get to see how things are sorted. Now it looks from my eagle eye that they're moving and consolidating people more towards the center of our room. We had 13 target bales that were set up for 26 archers. Normally what you see in eliminations or in uh, qualification matches, how many how many archers on a bale normally, Mike Schlusser? They're normally four people on a bale. Um, they should alternate, so like AB is up first and then CD. Here in Vegas rules, the bottom two targets shoot first and then the upper two targets shoot second. Um, halfway around, like after five ends of three arrows, you swap around. So top to bottom, bottom to top. And also shooting order, like the bottom stays uh, shooting first. So um, yeah, it's shooting order changes. Do you ever find it um, that
that your, your top target setup and your bottom target setup when you do practice that way or any ever different? Uh, for me, personally not, because I'm used to shooting a, a vertical spot anyways. So for me, shooting the bottom, uh, top to bottom, bottom to top doesn't matter much because I'm used to it anyways. But I can imagine that people that only shoot these bigger spots, that it can be a very difficult feeling because it, the bottom is really low compared to the top. Seven remain as we look at Bodie Turner make his way back so to the shooting line. The names that you're seeing here are pretty incredible. Right. You have here your champion, are. Bodie Turner. You have Chris Schaaf, who's We're podium. Hanson, who's podium. Kyle Douglas team. is a champion. And then you have a couple of not as well-known household names. Portman still in it. Jevznik from Slovenia still in the mix, as is Fullerton from Denmark. Stefan Hansen did not like the shot that just left his bow. He was shaking his head. Yeah, I was even shaking before he hit the target. So he knew exactly where it was. You can see the upper left-hand part of your screen. The score as we see it. Looks like already nines dropped. You no know, Hansen from his viewpoint. Didn't like it. Portman didn't like his either. Okay. Mm. Looks like Could that be Bodie Turner? Is that one called as a nine? Yeah, it's very close. I think it might have caught, but I'm not sure about it, though. Could our reigning champ be out of it? This is going to be an interesting arrow call. Let's go to Bruce. Jevznik, 30. So the Slovenian's still in it. Fullerton, 30. Matthias Fullerton. Hangs tight. Hortman, 29. Drew Hortman out. What a great run for him. Douglas, 30. Now Douglas rolls on with a 30. Now the one everybody's anticipating. What is the arrow call here for Bodie Turner? Taking their time. They want to make sure it's right. There's a lot of a lot of prize money on the line. Fifty-seven thousand dollars from the NFAA for the winner. There was a boo from the crowd, but Turner, 29. Now he's out. So for the birthday boy, unfortunately for him, Bodie Turner is out Hansen, of the mix. 29. Stephen Hansen also out. Schaff, 30. Chris Give Schaff, all, still in it. round of applause. So we just lost three of our seven. We are down to the final four. Tim Jeffstick of Slovenia, Matthias Fullerton of Denmark. What an international player Chris we Schaff have. Of Montana. And Let's Kyle take a look at what we can see. Utah. It looks like the first shot. You can see Hansen, he knew immediately that that one didn't hit. Fullerton and Bodie has a good look at it and he knows it's close but in the end after a long look from our judges it's over. Portman with a great run. He'll go home should have a big smile on his face unlike our defending champion Bodie Turner. He's out but Mike Schluser you know that there is a lot of outstanding archery coming the 16 year old way. Yeah, for sure like he has a great season so far with just Lancaster and yesterday so there will be definitely more coming. If you're just joining us, it's the Vegas Shoot 2023 at the South Point Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada. 
We're coming off of three incredible days of shooting where we had 3,909 participants come out to shoot a variety of classes. Depends on what type of bow you shoot, how, many, how much stuff is on it, your age, all kinds of stuff. But this is the, the piece de resistance. This is the big one for $57,000. Plus whatever other checks you're gonna have from your sponsors, we're down to four. We will be moving to alternate. The podium so close. Now we're going to go alternating shots. What does that mean? Mike so Schluter. It's every archer shoots one arrow at a time. So we have four people here. So all the four people first shoot one arrow. Then they go to factor the first one that's going to shoot the second arrow. Then they all shoot the second arrow. And then the later, the first one is going to shoot the third arrow, the last arrow. And then the rest is going to shoot them as well. So it looks like we're going to start off. Everybody understand? With okay. Neem Champ, Chris Shaw. Here we go. Good luck. He's been on this kind of stage before. Chris Shaw with a big off season change, shooting for PSE now. Shaw appears to shot 10. Yeah, it's good. All right, so Mike Schlusser says good. 10 9 minor. Kyle Douglas. Didn't like that. He gave it a little English after the shot. Tried to lift it up into that X ring. Ten. Fullerton with a ten. Now the Slovenian. Ten. That's into that. <laughs> And a lot of people are asking themselves, who is this young archer to Shaw? Ten. That's good as well. Ooh. Big hiccup from Kyle. We have seen that with him Ooh. before. Ten. Inside out. <laughs> and he gets it inside out. So it's not that it's part of his shooting <laughs> style necessarily, <laughs> but he, he does have that tool in his toolbox in case it happens. Such a smooth and good release from Fullerton on that one. Inside out again. Jeff's Nick, Slovenia. I'm sure we're not pronouncing that right, but we'll he wins it, we're going to know. Liner. Ooh. shot bombed off the line on that one. Let's see if he thinks he got it. What do you think? I think that's it. Okay. Liner. That one's out to the right. And target number three. Liner. That's out. That one's out. So if we do have a perfect 30, that means that for Matthias Fullerton, he'll be going home. And oh. Wow. Story will now take place. Judges and Bruce will go through the line. Well, that was an outstanding run for the, Slo for the Slovenian archer, Tim Jevznik. Wait a second. There's a possibility right now that we could have a Vegas champion in Chris Schaff. It's going to come down to an arrow call, I think, with Kyle Douglas and that and that target number three. It can also be Chris, is like he has a close one as well, so it might be the other way around. Kyle's going to be a new one. Oh, let's go to Bruce. Exciting. So 29, we know, on the first one. Fullerton, 29. Okay, so those two are tied up. This is the big call right here, arrow number three. Douglas, 30. Okay. Schaff, 30. Here we go. Two of the best the United States has to offer. Both archers changing brands in the off season resetting the way that they view archery and now it comes down to this who has done the work mike schlusser in the weeks leading up to this I think uh, uh, you de know definitely both because changing a brand there's so much things to learn so much thing to do i know that uh chris has been shooting with brady 
uh, a lot in its basement, so I know they've been putting in uh, the work. And seeing the stories from Kyle, that he hurt his finger tuning his bow, so I think he's been putting in the work as well. So <laughs> yeah. I, th I think the boat have been working on the, the boat just to get it to know and, and keep see how it's most forgiving in these high tension situations. So it's down to this. We have Kyle Douglas, who's already won this two times, who, if he can pull it off over Chris Schaff, will be our fifth archer in history to win it three times. Pretty incredible to think. Do you know the four archers that have won this three, <laughs> three times? I know two of them, Chance and Rio. And before that, it's got to be like way before my time. Jeff Rogers and Terry Ragsdale. So yeah, it's definitely That's before your time. time yeah. Definitely before your time. Jeff Smith against Fullerton. So does Kyle Douglas. They both tie with 29. Cole Bolt his so name into members. Vegas shoot legend. Or uh, will Chris right, Shaw be able to get it done? First. Before we get to all that, these two have to shoot off for third place. Same rules apply. Third place pays 10,000, fourth place 6,000. Big difference between third and fourth is the quantity from your brands. So that if you get third, you get quantity from your brands that you shoot, and if you're fourth, you don't. So there's a lot of Ooh. big, big gap in there. That's a good point. See how this youngster rebounds. Ten nine miters, both of them have a solid ten for Fullerton. So from your export point of view, Mike Schlusser, what do you think you've seen down there so far? Um, so far, I think it's a 29 from, uh, from Matthias, and I think it's a 30 from Tim. Ooh. Matthias yeah. is very close, though, so. Our judges will be looking to Boy, see after that 8-9 line bomber that the Slovenian threw down there, this would be quite a way to rebound. Let's hear what Bruce Cole has to say down at the target. Jevznik, 30. Tim Jevznik, a 30. Now it comes down to this call. Mike Schlusser seems to think that Fullerton has a 29. Our judge is taking a nice, long, close look at it with a magnifying glass and light. This for third Fullerton, place. Fullerton, 29. 29 for Fullerton. So fourth Big round place. Of applause. We have third and fourth places. For him. So how about this young man getting after it? Shows up. Tim Jevznik from Slovenia will walk away with $10,000 so, from coming the NBA. It's, it's going to be and third place. And put his name in the record book as a podium finisher. And Mike Schlusser looking at this. Got a four-fingered release, only using two fingers. Sometimes like uh, people like to soft them around, put the fourth finger or the third finger on there to um, make it go so a bit quicker. I think it's a 29th from, um, if you only put two fingers, you need to work harder to do your shot. So in, in these high pressure moments, if you only use two fingers, it's a more of a clean release. Great job by our third place finisher, but it's coming down to this. $57,000 on the line. Kyle Douglas won two in a row, 20, 20, 20, 21. He's going for his third. Chris Schaaf. This is it right here. Good luck, guys. Trying to get his first. 
Trough has been under the pressure of these lights before. Mostly world archery. Yeah. Start us off. That's yeah. There's no question. No Mike. question about that one, no. <laughs> Greg White sitting alongside Mike. Sitting alongside Mike Schlusser here in the Vegas shoot 2023. First arrows are fired for each archer's going for the number one spot. One bobble. That could be. The shot dropped it. That's what I'm talking about. Now it's in Kyle Douglas's hands. The door is completely open for him to capture his third. Ooh, and that one looks high too. I think they're both nines. Okay. Chris Schaff, he's got to batten down the hatches here. Yeah, that's good. So it looks like from our vantage point, it could come down to this for Kyle Douglas. A 10 here to continue on. A 9, and Chris Schaff is Vegas champion. That's yep. And he got it. Wow. Mike Schlusser, can you feel the tension in this room right now? I'm getting nervous myself just watching this. It is pretty incredible. All right, let's get these arrows call, arrow calls from Bruce Call. Douglas, 29. And Schaff, 29. We we'll move on, 29 apiece. Seven arrows ago, it started off with 26, and we're down to our final two. And there's Chris Schaff. Mike Schlusser, you've been there. Yeah, we all have been there. You know, when you release a shot that it doesn't hit, and the only thing you can think about is like how to get better in the next one, get over it, and just start over the process again. Both these archers know how to win, and they know how to win at a high level. The difference is, is that Kyle Douglas has done it a couple times here in the Preferred Arena. Trying to three-peat. Chris Schaff trying to close the deal in the biggest tournament of his career. All right, so just a quick reset. And a little grin from Chris Schaff, who's here with some family members, including his youngest of three. Of course, when Chris isn't competing in archery, he's normally at a hill climb or a dirt track with his, his oldest son his oldest kid, whose son, Trexton, trying to build a career on the motorcycle side of things. As for Kyle Douglas, we know that uh, he's one of the most technical, proficient archers out there, owning a bow shop and really uh, got into the nuts and bolts of his bow once he put it in his All hands. Right guys, same thing, X counts as 10. Same thing, X counts line. as 10. Good luck. Schaff starts us off. Yeah. 10. 10 for Schaff. Sometimes, Mike Schlusser, you can just see on the release of Kyle Douglas that it's just going right to the middle. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. If Chris Schaff shoots a 10 year, he's going to be Vegas champion. Yeah. $57,000 on the line. Yep. Yeah. And he got it! 
He's going back to hug Brady Ellison. Wait till this call. It, through the binos, Mike Schlusser, what are you seeing? I'm pretty sure that guy was yeah. So. And congratulations from Schaff. Yeah. And Kyle Douglas, Schaff anxious to get down to the yellow line and have a look, Bruce Cole side by side. Let's get right to it. Do we have a brand new Vegas champion? Or will this move on? I think the calls are pretty clear. Here's Bruce. Well, it looks like Bruce isn't making the call till right now. Second place in the Vegas shoot. And the new Vegas champion, right here, Chris Schaff. The crowd erupts as Chris Schaff, coming off of a neem victory, made his way to the final stage at Lancaster just a week ago. And with his brand new we bow will in be hand hearing from PSC, Chris Schaff he's now in our just newest a few moments. Vegas shoot champion. What do you think about that, Mike Schluser? Yeah, it's very exciting to see. It's great to see. And now the celebrations begin. Here's Bruce. Hey, let's light him up in here. We've got a lot of uh, chips, T-shirts, and of course we have our awards with all the big money. Now we're going to be able to talk to our Vegas champion as he pauses a moment to put that headset on because he knows what's coming. Hey. Well, Chris Schaff, you know this is coming. Congratulations. You're the newest Vegas champion. How does it feel, buddy? Right now, I have no idea. <laughs> this is by far the biggest, you know, I've wanted this ever since I was little, and now to have it is unreal. Tell us about that last arrow that you had to shoot and the pressure was mounting. You've been in these situations before, but never for $57,000. Yeah, it's just, I got to give it to Brady Ellison, give me the house to practice in. I mean, I've shot a ton of arrows this year and it's paid off. And you're coming at it with a brand new bow manufacturer this year. You worked really hard at it. How's it hitting? Oh, it's unreal. If you don't have a PSC Dominator, buy one. And there you go. Congratulations, Chris Shaw, the newest Vegas champion. Can't wait to see him on the podium holding up his check for $57,000. Getting it done, childhood dream in the books. Well, we saw some great shooting, Mike Schlusser. What did you think about the entire 2023 Vegas shoot? It didn't come short of any expectation. I like, guess great show, great archers. Um, it was just awesome to watch. It was really cool to see. Well, we certainly appreciate your insight into the Vegas shoot this year. Hey, we're going to do it again next year at the South Point Hotel and Casino. There are 3,909 archers that signed up to shoot this. Why don't you get here and make it another record-breaking year? for all of our champions. Tanya Galantine here, taking it home. But how about the showdown between Kyle Douglas and Chris Schaaf? And at the end, it was Schaaf. After a high X count weekend, the Montana resident takes the big prize. For Kyle Douglas, he's still sitting at two Vegas championships, and he'll be back next year to do it. Well, for our entire crew here, the NFAA and everybody involved, and for Mike Schuster, I'm Greg White. Thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to see you in the Vegas Shoot 2024.